Now welcome to part 3 of the um, <coughs> just the overview of the process of creating this environment diorama um, that I want to, was going to use to sit me 40k rhino tank into. So this is where I'm up to now at the moment. Um, in the tour part as I said I'm going to create the uh, this kind of ruined section of wall at the back. But um, in the meantime, you know I've just continued on doing what I've been showing you. Um, adding in these bits of shrapnel and um, bigger stones here and there uh, a bit of this old corrugated uh, metal dumped into the water and these couple of skulls and then here's the rebar um, I'll, I'll show a quick uh, couple of second overview of through the undo buffer of how I did that in a second uh, modeled the rebar it only took a few minutes uh, this piece of rebar here is really simple to make um, just an extra little uh, detail I decided to add it only took me a couple of minutes to make it two or three minutes to make it so and um, basically just started off with a uh, you know poly mesh uh, cylinder and just fiddled around with the size of it and I'm just going through the undo buffer duplicate it a bit out Just lined it up. Use that modeler to isolate those verts and just stretch them out. Transpose line. Then these parts, um, all that was was uh, a helix 3D primitive um, appended, appended in here, and um, I just used trim curve sliced off the bits I didn't want I just wanted one of the revolutions um, and I just put that roughly into place as well and I, I chopped it off chopped half it off and then I just uh, control shift transpose line dragged a bit out and then just uh, mirrored it and just put it on the other side and then control shift drag them up to copy them out um, and then I just merged all these bits into one bit and then I just control shift drag that out and I just did that multiple times to get the length of it and that's pretty much it then I just uh, and dynamesh it and it's going to be <coughs> from a distance here so don't have to be that high res. Um, you know, nipped a bit off the ends as usual with the um, the trim dynamic, but it's going to be seen from you know this kind of distance. So it actually, you know, it does for the two minutes or something it took to make it. <coughs> uh, you know, it does look like a, a bit of rebar. So all I'm going to do is um, just use that as an insert mesh, then line it up on the canvas and uh, just create an insert mesh from that and then I can just uh, drag it out in the normal on my concrete and then just use the transpose line sink it into the concrete and maybe sculpt around it then but that's basically all dead simple um, and you know all just kind of bits and bobs you can just do in ZBrush without having to leave do it really quickly so I just stuck a few bits of rebar coming out of the concrete um, and that is pretty much it. Another layer of I think another layer of stone. Well, you saw me doing this layer of stones around here, and you know you don't want to. Um, you want to. I want to. You want to leave some areas like this. You know, there's still a bit of detail, and then when you go close, but it's not completely overpowering. Whereas you have smooth kind of noise-free detail here, here, and there's not too much detail on the concrete pillars. And then this is very plain as well, so you want that contrast between, um, you know, lots of kind of noisy detail, and then areas where there's not really much detail, just so you know the eye doesn't get overpowered. So yeah, it's just all, you know, appending, building some of these set of their separate sub tools, copy and pasting them back into the main one, uh, line and everything, adding in all the extra bits, uh, making sure all these bits of stones are. Uh, randomized and the ground goes up and down and just starting to make it sort of look more natural 
and then you're probably wondering <laughs> about this the water here and I'm going to just show I won't show how I created it it was done in um, Phoenix FD plugin uh, for 3D Max so I'll jump across to that now so here's the uh, the Phoenix F FD um, simulator that I used to, to do the water so I'll jump back to ZBrush first and um, all I did was uh, which one is it um, not that one that's the rebar uh, is it up the top here yeah um, yeah I'll just solve that out so here it is here just brought in as a mesh into ZBrush but um, all I did was uh, I just copy and pasted all these bits from the main tool in here into an, into a new tool and uh, dropped them all down to their lowest levels and um, merged them all into one and just goes here over to Max then to use um, I didn't actually need the base so I'll jump back to Max so I didn't need the base because the boundaries of uh, the Phoenix simulator here are, are you know I brought the base across and then deleted it once I had the, the boundaries of so the box set up to just inside where the water would hit uh, that frame and then this weird bit of geometry here is um, obviously our ledge, a concrete ledge and I just deleted all the bits I didn't want and I just want this bit because <coughs> Phoenix the way it simulates anything that's inside the uh, the simulator grid here it automatically um, gets added into the simulation loop so you don't have to you don't have to tell it to, to interact and um, it just does it automatically so that's why I brought these concrete pillars in because you know the water will lap up against them and then obviously <laughs> obviously you need this so I just selected um, a few faces on this uh, ID ID 3 so I just selected a couple of faces here and here and told them through this um, this like the the, the liquid source the Phoenix liquid source so you know valid in um, the pillar through ID 3 and that'll just um, you know, I'll just eject this uh, water in depending on uh, your settings here and your simulation so I'm not going to go through all this but <coughs> Max doesn't have any native uh, fluid so Phoenix FD here it's a chaos group plugin same people that make V-Ray and I've done a couple of projects with it and it's a uh, fantastic uh, plugin it's brilliant um, you know you can do any kind of fluid smoke um, steam water um, it's really really powerful um, and then you can add in foam and splashes I didn't do it in here because it's supposed to be kind of filthy so that's the sewage water so um yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much all I did so once I'm not going to go into all this because there's loads of settings and yeah we just wanted to show you what I did you can display this as a preview you can display this as as the mesh then so you can get an idea what the mesh looks like and then you can just apply the material here and render it to get an idea so the higher your resolution here your grid resolution um, which is up here so whatever it's nearly 34 million cells so you usually decrease that right down to a million or two million um, to preview it and then just let the sim run and you can get an initial fill up here which I did 20% initial fill up um, so, so you're not waiting uh, months on end for this to fill up before it actually starts um, interacting there but uh, yeah so that fills up on the first frame and then it starts pouring out of these predefined uh, faces and this mesh that's where the water emits them and then when, when I'm when I was happy I just stopped the sim it was about 100 frame 150 or whatever it was it didn't take long um, at this resolution for what I needed it for which was pretty cool and then just right click and convert to editable poly and then it's a mesh then goes e and then because I had my scale set up from the very start of the project I don't have to worry about anything like that just goes e and then um, it just came uh, came straight in 
in yeah it just came straight in exactly where I wanted it um, and then because I had to adjust the geometry over there to stop the water spilling over the sides uh, raised it up a bit so all I did there was uh, you know when I brought it into the main till just used a move brush and just just barely kind of yeah, just turn that one back on just barely touched it with the move brush just to bring it down and then I just brought these bits over the side as well I was a bit more careful than that when I was doing it but and this bit here I just brought down and then when I brought it in then I just adjusted it the move brush and just got it into position around the pipe and that's basically it um, that's basically it then and here's the f uh, finished and this is I don't know 40 40 million polygons or something like that um, in total brought into Keisha took a couple of minutes to get it in but it's in <laughs> and it's the main thing so yeah as I say I just wanted to show that anyway um, th that process you know of adding in the water and the other few bits and pieces so uh, we'll move on next now to creating the ruined section of wall so we'll get started here modeling now with a quick cylinder and I'm just going to uh, rotate it uh, 22 and a half degrees there on the Y just to get that um, the flat face facing out towards us and moving into position and just just in the uh, the global scale of it there just in relation to the paving slabs and um, this is all sort of just uh, you know stuff that you kind of just make a judgment on it because you don't have any real scale to go off so it's just sort of uh, personal preference really and uh, I, I just have that other ref when I'm, that I'm loosely basing it off off the side of the screen there so I'm just kind of looking at that as I'm modeling and just adding in some uh, edge loops where I'm going to need them and sort of just uh, planning on the fly kind of you know um, so this is the uh, just adding a few more support loops because I want the, the wall to kind of um, extrude out from around the side there as well so just all tagging those faces and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I want to extrude them out along the axis so I'm just going to um, use the mask the mask action or oh, sorry yeah just isolate those faces control shift click uh, mask them control shift click to bring everything back and then just invert the mask and control shift drag once to get um, the thickness of one and then I'm just pressing one to repeat last so they're all exactly the same size the extrusions and I've just counted out the amount of them there that I wanted and just press the one key down that amount of times and now just uh, Q mesh a single poly and line them up so I'm just modeling the front of it here I'm not um, I'm not bothering with the back I could be uh, using mirror and well or symmetry or whatever but I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother because uh, it'll never be seen we're only gonna see this side of it so just more just more tweaking mask that out transpose move just to stretch it out and move it slightly and um, this is going to be quite even though it's a hard surface stone structure it's going to be organic sort of a sculpt and that's not going to be no part of it's going to be perfect obviously due to the fact that it's a ruined uh, old wall so uh, you don't have to be a hundred percent here because it's going to be all you're going to be messing it all up with the sculpting brushes anyway so there i just um tagged all those faces and uh, just tapped um all to think it was there brought them all out um, and inset uh, changed all the poly groups to the same poly group and just use inset poly group all and then uh, q mesh poly group all so we could do all those operations in just in a couple of clicks rather than all individually and now um you know that this is uh, this is the beauty of being able to do this stuff now um with Zed modeler in Zed brush create a base base mesh like this um, 
using box modeling techniques that gives us all the main forms that we're going to need for for a piece like this um, before we dynamesh it so it's it's really is great to have this within Z brush now to be able to do this you know um because I can get nearly all the basic forms I need for this wall really really quickly um and then just dynamesh the whole lot um and just start sculpting and because uh you know we can just because it's all 90 degree corners you can just uh you can just uh, crease all the edges subdivide it a couple of times and still get that um, resolution and nice edges and everything on it when subdivided and then dynamesh it um, so I'm just using the slide there just moving a few bits around it like all, a lot of this can be done in this, at the sculpting stage but it's nice to just it's quick to, to get as I say to get these forms in and while we while we can in Z modeler you know um, you know this could have been done to use I'm always saying to use we could have did a shadow box and uh, clipping and trimming and Dynamesh and all the rest of it, but um, this is so uh, so quick to do in Z Modeler, and we can kind of we can do it we can do it quite accurately as well, considering the method like is is, is actual poly modeling. And when I say accurate, <laughs> I just mean more accurate than something like Shadowbox. And it doesn't matter about because it's all getting dynamished, you can know, you can just add in add in loops wherever you like and not have to worry <coughs> <coughs> sorry about the topology. As long as we have the topology where we want to suit our, our purposes, that's all that matters. So as I say like this I'm, I'm kinda just this is just being done on the fly. Um so there's no real kind of plan of attack around. I'm sort of just planning it in a sense as I go. Um, but it's all it's all so quick to do that. You know, it's it's no big deal. Especially because we know um, the end of it, we're just going to be dynameshing. So we'll just have a bit of an error there to the mesh because I had an extra uh, face added in that I didn't want. You can see it there tagged, so just be careful of that and just you can alt click on that to remove it from the uh, from the tag selection. So if you are getting strange errors when you Q mesh like that, just it's something to definitely um, be mindful of that you might have just uh, tagged the face inadvertently. So most of the basic. Uh, primary form there is in and you can just you know play around with it. it's, it's so nice to just p p play around here with uh, the Q mesh and just pull things out pull them back in and you, you don't really like you could do this kind of modeling in your 3d package and you know there might be overlapping verts that you didn't well or there might be you know all these kind of errors rats nests and co-planar faces and all this other sort of stuff where it's because their uh, bush, uh, you know, it's illegal to create angons. Won't allow you to create angons. Um, you can get messed up topology, and it'll give you an error. Um, but you know, it's 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 a lot less, and it'll also tell you that there's an error there. So you know, if you try to subdivide it using dynamic subdivision, um, it'll it'll give you that error. Um, so you, you're free to just you know play around as much as you want, and not have to worry too much about creating them um, illegal topology so I'm just uh, experimenting here as I say um, this is mostly about uh, just getting the primary forms in um, you know the silhouette if you like of the piece and um, the rest of it's going to be taken care of at the sculpting stage. So if you're doing if you're doing this type of thing, um, you know don't uh, don't worry too much about uh, getting everything just right or lining things up and all that sort of stuff. For some of the other things, I was modeling them um, like the uh, the Rhino tank. You know, I was following a reference, so you know. 
and I wanted to kind of show that you could use Z model or following a reference like that and do it fairly accurately as you might do in a 3D package but the likes of this the very aim of it at the end is to to get it as kind of old and rough and damaged looking as possible so the more kind of the, the more messy in a sense it is uh, the more beneficial it's going to be to the end result <laughs> within reason of course And I'm, you might notice a lot of the times I, I tag faces when I could switch over to, um, you know, Polygroup Island or whatever. But for me, a lot of the times, instead of changing, I keep changing and changing back and changing. A lot of the times, it's just I find it quicker just to, when you're in the thick of modeling just to tag the faces. I'm sure it's a hang up from uh, years and years of modeling in 3D Max where you have to select your faces first and then apply it to them. But just for me, it's um, you know, when you're in the flow of things, you know, I just find it unnecessary to to, to change over to specific um, uh, targets if I don't really really have to. If I can do it just as quickly with by tagging the faces, I'll do that. So I'm just adding in, um, beveling that with whatever four rows, and just using the scale edge loop complete, just to give us that kind of uh, seam between the stones. And that's another thing, like that, you know, um, you can get in your base mesh. Um, it's quite simple as well to just go in with a damn standard or whatever, and just and cut it in, holding shift. Um, so it'll be a straight line, but why not just get it in in uh, in our base mesh topology when it's that simple to do? So I'm just I'm not happy with it. It's too wide there, so um, I'm just grabbing a couple of selections of verts and uh, I'm just gonna move them in because it's it's for me it's it's just too wide. But this is all stuff when you're modeling on the fly like this, and you've no particular references really to go off. It's just decisions you kind of make as you go the old saying if it looks good it is good but of course what looks good to you <laughs> might look good to other people and vice versa so you just have to sort of go with your own instincts a lot of the time if, if you're not modeling to uh, spe uh, specifications or references or annoying people that keep telling you to change things that you know is good and they don't know is bad so I'm just um, adding in a couple of edge loops and just uh, beveling up those corners so when we do subdivide they're going to stay sharp and I'm just going to set the uh, crease tolerance and the crease levels in preparation for subdividing just to you know just to see what it looks like when it's subdivided so that we're maintaining that creasing those sharp edges so um nearly there that's it's nearly done a bit more tweaking and uh you can see there I, I that dodgy topology at the bottom um I don't know. I don't know when that came. I don't, don't know when that came about. Um, I don't know how that happened, but it was no big deal. All I did was uh, the delete poly uh, flat island, uh, close holes. And that's it. Then there was, there was one or two uh, um, verts that are overlapping, um, and I just dragged them back yeah, using the slide or the move point tool. So it's no big deal. Once you, you know, dynamesh, then it'll take care of the, the rest of the tidying up which there wasn't much of. You can see just on each corner there, you can see where the, I think I noticed it there now. And, uh, you know, just use the slide tool and just move it back and that's it fixed. This one is a bit messier, but, uh, because, um, of the nature of a Zeb modeler or Zeb brush, um, end guns are illegal, so, 
when you add in um, insert the edge loops um, it'll plow right on through uh, poles whereas if you know if you're used to modeling a 3d package obviously you, you know your edge loop is going to stop at a pole junction but um, in ZBrush it'll carry straight on through and sometimes you don't know where it's going to end up so it's just something to watch out for if you're being conscientious about your topology but you know you can come in quite easily and just get rid of some of the edge loops with a holding alt with the insert edge loop tool to get rid of them but as I say we're dynamishing this so it don't really matter so that is about it now just a little bit more tweaking and I can call that pretty much the base mesh uh, finished right so it's time to put the mouse away and get the uh, get the good old Wacom out and just uh, get sculpting so um, usually you know I'll start off uh, trim dynamic and uh, I'll just uh, you know wear away um, any of the edges um, looking at the, at the pillar again now what I'm sculpting it here looking back over this video um, I should have tightened up those edges a bit more um, they turned out alright in the end but I probably would have preferred to uh, when I beveled them uh, I probably should have tightened up the edge loops just to make that a little bit sharper but um, it's not going to make a huge difference to the end result um, so yeah basically I'm just going to go around uh, trim dynamic uh, more or less the same as I mentioned in uh, the earlier video there in the first part I think uh, with paving slabs you know um, and I, I did say this as well back in that one <coughs> a good uh, way of looking at um, the two main brushes for for this kind of environment kind of environmental damage kind of sculpting um, or for me anyway uh, clay build up um, and trim dynamic and then I'm going to use uh, H polish and uh, clay tubes as well so as I was saying, the way, uh, a good way of looking, I think it was Nate Stevens, he's an environment artist. Um, what he said was, uh, his way of looking at it was trim dynamic was, he he would use it for natural sort of weathering, um, like erosion uh, from rain, wind, or entropy, um, you know, aging basically, um, and the clay build up and clay tubes for, for more for damage uh, sort of concentrated damage you know where it lumps you know a vehicle drove into the corner of it a shell exploded on it whatever happens you know um, so that's I think that's a good way of looking at it so that's what I'm doing here now I'm just uh, using clay build up and um, the mesh has been dynameshed I think I dynameshed it to a million and the good thing about the dynamesh master which I use is it's not size dependent the settings you can change but basically you can just set your your target uh, count poly count hit dynamesh and um, it won't it won't work di dynamically every time you swipe uh, swipe the mask you, you have to uh, dynamesh it um, you have to go up and physically hit the dynamesh button if you want to read dynamesh it which uh, you know sometimes when I was working with the, the, the the dynamish that's already in ZBrush, I'd, uh, you know, I, I'd hit the mask, I'd hit control with mistake on me uh, keys on me on me Wacom tablet, and you know, I'd go through the process of, of dynamish and uh, you know, by mistake, kind of hold you up. So I'm just uh, plugging away here still. Uh, same two brushes, trim dynamic and clay build up, and um, you know, you um, this. Uh, eventually is it's pretty much going to be um as as i'm recording it as i'm narrating over this now i've actually finished the uh, the paint over of the final diorama with the tank and everything in it um and it's it's you know it's it's a stylized kind of an illustration piece um so although you're kind of aiming for you know the idea of you know realism as in somebody looks at this and says oh look there's a there's an old damaged wall like they're not going to say oh look it's a a pink umbrella that they're going to be able to associate it with what it's supposed to be so um these brushes you know <laughs> you can't really go too far wrong 
You know, it's not like you're sculpting them a head and it has to be anatomically correct and you know if, if all the forms have to be in place and um, different muscle uh, groups and insertions and uh, bony landmarks and all the rest of it you know that all unless you're creating a cartoon character or just an alien that doesn't have to really look like anything you know when you're going for um, anything anatomical um, you know, really does have to have to have to look correct. Somebody's going to automatically know by looking at a human. Uh, oh, that doesn't look like there's something off there. Something's wrong here because we're so used to looking at each other. An evolutionary sort of a thing built in. But the likes of the stone wall, uh, nobody's going to say, oh, that that the stone wall wouldn't break like that. Or, you know, so it's it's um, it's it's really it's going to pretty much look like a stone wall, and uh, no matter what. Um, so just kind of bear that in mind, you know, as long as you're, um, you know, you have your references up or, or whatever, you know, to give it that extra bit of realism. Um, I have to confess to not having reference up when I was doing this, um, apart from that one uh, blurry image of where I got the idea for this diorama, what it based this diorama on, the, the kind of macro photograph of the real world diorama. But, um, so that's you know just a few of my rambling uh, thoughts on the subject. I'm not saying be sloppy and, and don't give a shit. You know, it, it, you still want to kind of um, put the work in, but these this this isn't. It's not going to be an asset in the game. It's going to be seen from all angles or up really close. Or um, you know, game players can't linger around and and <laughs> start the. Uh, given out about it because it doesn't look like a, a wall from this angle or that angle it's it's for an illustration really and also a lot of this stuff you want to you don't want to be months and months working on a piece and um, feel like you're never going to get it finished and start to lose heart and all the rest for essentially parts of it that you might never even see so um, you know le learn when and when not to kind of overdo or underdo the detail nothing worse than you know being halfway or nearly finished a project and starting to lose motivation and no matter what you do you just you just can't get that that happiness that joy that you might have had uh, you know near the beginning of the project and it's only when when things start to come together you know um you know like a lot of time i go through the phase of saying oh this looks terrible i'm gonna scrap this and stick it in my graveyard folder but uh you know, when you do get to that point and, and things are going well and you're happy, it's it's a, it's a great feeling, you know, and it gives you that motivation to push on through and, and, and finish the project. So I suppose I'm just uh, talking shit here to kill time because uh, there's not a huge amount more to be said for this type of thing. You know, I'm still, as you can see, trim dynamic and... Uh, you know, killing all these edges is essential on a, on a piece like this. Um, and I found uh, I found that, as I mentioned earlier on, that um, starting this like you know, it's it's geometrically not not complex, but visually, I suppose it's complex. So to be able to start from that uh, Z model or base mesh um, was just a huge, huge uh, head start for a piece like this. You know, and you saw um, how quick it was to, to model it out. And you, you know, everything's in place, so all your primary forms, so it's just a matter of, you know, doing your secondary and, and tertiary if, if you're gonna put them on as well. Um, so basically it's yeah it's just it's adding damage wear and tear erosion and weathering as i said earlier on and now i'm probably starting to repeat myself but um you know these are i suppose just things that i try to bear in mind as i'm as i'm creating and rules of thumb i've kind of made for myself and i've heard others say others you know professional 
um, I'm not I'm not a professional or anything, but other artists that are professional, and, um, it's great to listen to. You know some of the things they have to say and take them on board, and if if it if it helps me and me me workflow and, and creating art, um, and improving myself, then you know I'm happy. So here you can see I'm just using them. Um, and Ma Mech, it's a, it's a great it's a set of brushes. Uh, Ma, it's um, Miguel Angel Hernandez or Michelangelo Hernandez, uh, Malagas the Black, I think he's known as on uh, Zebra Central. So that this is a, a collection of his brushes, the Ma brushes. M A H, uh, his initials. Um, so that's Ma Mech with A and there's B as well. So that's a great brush. Um, it's all in the name. Um, so what I'm doing there then is I'm just trying out, you know, I've masked off that section and uh, I'm just using a, a negative inflate and seeing what kind of results but I don't really like it, I prefer the results from the um, from the Ma Mech brush cut so another handy tip here, this is a you know, it's you snap into your autographic projection here and you saw when I added the detail below there in the panel, the kind of fielded panel section in the middle, I'm doing it again here now uh, just hold shift brushes on there but yeah you can just hold shift and that's gonna um you line up your view like I'm doing there and just hold shift and that'll like Photoshop it'll draw uh draw the dead straight line and snap to whatever way you start to move the mouse and uh it's just a it's a handy thing to to know when you're sculpting things like that. So more clay build up smashing things up lot of this detail in, in the last in the final um, illustration you know gets gets lost um, when it's been textured but uh, you know if you if, if you're going to turn this into a game I say with normal maps and all the rest of it um, a PBR kind of a game I say you know this would, it would all show up and as I said earlier you're going to be seeing it from all different angles in a game and the, the lighting is going to fall on it differently so you will see all those details so um but it's, it's quick to do as well so you know i know i said earlier on about not putting in details we don't need them but you know i could quite easily turn this into a game i say um the, top, the topology is nearly there already from um from the z model or base mesh you know you could just clean up some of the edge loops you wouldn't even really need to retopologize it or you could uh decimation master so this sort of stuff um, you know when you're adding damage and um, even when you're uh, doing paint over and you're adding scratches and dirt and all the rest you know there's nothing worse than just lumping it all on all over the place and, and just you know having it just a big noisy mess with stuff everywhere you know you, you want um, that contrast between uh you know kind of uh, detail highly sort of detailed areas and then kind of flat uh sort of blank in a way surfaces just so you have that uh that visual contrast so you know people don't sort of you know their eyes kind of just pained <laughs> by trying to take in too much So this, I think I went through a couple of different revisions on this top part, I, I, I wasn't really happy, or I think that the first time I sculpted it, I, I wasn't happy at the time, and then I re-sculpted it and lost the original detail, and then the second bit I sculpted I wasn't happy with, and then I realised that I was happy with the first bit, and I wish I could have went back to that, but I never saved out, or used a morph target, or a layer, or, or, or duplicated the sub tool around, so I kind of lost that detail, so... Um, it is a good habit as well to get into um to uh you know to save out um incremental save or several versions of a tool with different states or layers even though i don't really use layers that much or even morph targets targets while you're in that particular session just so you always have something to go back to um, but you know it's you know re and it doesn't take long um, 
you know, sometimes you don't even have to bother kind of control Z and you can just fix it up with your sculpting brushes. So I'm just masking uh, masking that area out, inverting it, and then uh, just clicking it on the normal, and then transpose, and then a bit more trim dynamic, just to uh, kill off that sharp edge. And every now and again, you know, check with a few different materials, and uh, the basic material and the matte cap grey are going to give you a good approximation of what it is actually going to look like. A lot of the matte caps are deceptive, you know, especially the horrible uh, red wax. It <laughs> pains me to even see that. I wish they'd changed that, or if anyone knows a way of changing that so it isn't the default material when you start up ZBrush, I would be very, very thankful to get that information off you. So now I'm kind of moving on to some of the tertiary detail in here. I'm using... Um, the XMD brushes, I mentioned them in one of the earlier videos, uh, I think Michael Dunham is the, is the lad's name, he's created, geez, he's created dozens and dozens and dozens of brushes, um, yeah, I think he's a huge amount of free ones and then he's got a couple for sale real cheap, so you know, you're on Gumroad there, good to support blokes like that because um, he was, you know, he's given so much to the community sort of for free. Um, all these brushes, so I've started to use these recently. Um, I don't really do any environment sculpting. This is pr pr this is the first one piece I've ever done, really. So um, I found these brushes really, really useful. Um, I found myself going back to that, that blob brush there. It's, it's great. So you know, if in the earlier and the secondary detail, and you know, cutting those holes with the clay build up, and now um, I'm going in and you know sculpting over them again with some extra detail not just relying on that one hole I cut in and um, so you're kind of you're, you're going over it in passes and refining and refining but this whole project as I was kind of making it I was recording as a, as a, this kind of making of for a sort of a quasi tutorial or whatever so I didn't really you know I was you're trying to work on it quick as well you don't want to be spending weeks and weeks so you're trying to nearly get it done and the whole thing done in you know a couple of sessions while recording it and uh, get it uploaded not that I'm making excuses for me uh, shoddy uh, shoddy craftsmanship but there you go so just some more of those XMD brushes uh, a couple of crack brushes there's a huge he's a huge amount of brushes there's two terra sets which is all um obviously from the name sort of natural sort of earth stone rock cliffs ground cover concrete even though that's not natural but um you have all these different surfaces two terra brush sets then you've uh, things a drag brush set which has similar brushes in it but then he goes like he, he does brushes for nearly everything mech brushes uh, dragon scales loads of them you should check them out uh, michael dunham the xmd brushes So I'm coming, coming towards the end now. Um, just adding in bits and pieces here and there. And I tend to very rarely use the smooth brush unless um, I have a problem with a topology that I want to average out. I just don't like the, um, you know, I can see here I'm going in with the uh, trim dynamic again. You know, the blobby sort of rounded off. Just that smooth look. Um, I'd nearly rather use uh, trim dynamic or uh, the clay brushes in, in a subtract mode to clean things up a lot of the time because I just don't really like that the the effect that the smooth brush gives. So that is pretty much the end of. Uh, and the sculpting of the ancient ruined stone wall.
So here is the um, final sculpt, um, or what I'll call the final sculpt for considering it's a sort of a background kind of element. Um, so, no, it didn't turn out too bad. It's a nice bit of detail on it. Um, it looks a lot more complicated and time consuming, probably, than it is. Like, it really only took just over an hour from the very start of building it out with the Z modeler to sculpting up to now, just over an hour probably just under an hour and a half uh, whilst recording it so you know that's not too bad to kind of turn out a half decent kind of an asset like this which would be very easy to retopologize bake maps and use it in a game you know but uh so that's um that's pretty much that piece anyway um, just all using basic set of brushes and some of those um those great xmd brushes should advise anybody doing any of this kind of sculpting. Um, so next I'll just, uh, that's it for that, I'm, I'm just going to pause it and head off and uh, come back and I'll probably, I'll just have all the scene assembled then. Um, and that will be that. So here's the finished uh, diorama environment piece um, I've obviously dropped in the wall there at the back and, and uh, this is it <laughs> finished so the next step for me now I'm going to um, drop the 40k rhino tank in and I'll probably render out um, selection of passes and do a paint over in Photoshop so I probably won't record that entire session but but I will do a breakdown of the Photoshop paint over and um, when I'm finished it um, I'll just go through it layer by layer um, for more in depth sort of workflow and that you can have a look at the the bolter paint over that I did a plasma bolter paint over I went well in depth in that and covered the entire workflow in real time so yeah that's the end of this so um, you know hopefully if you watched along um, you might have learned a you know a few tips. Wasn't the same as my other tutorials, obviously the, in real time. But uh, yeah, this is just more of a um, you know more of a process kind of an overview thing. So maybe there's a couple of tips in there people might have found handy. Um, so that is that, and uh, so thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again in the next one. All right, cheers, thanks, good luck.